Hello and welcome along to another episode of Review the 92 with me, Daniel. Myself and co-host Tom talk about all of the grounds that we've been to in the English football pyramid as we attempt to do the 92. And after the last couple of episodes where we returned from a, a long pandemic break and got ourselves back in the fit, swing of things this season, sorry, we completed a triple header weekend. We've done Blackpool, we've done Salford in the FA Cup, but then we went to follow your first team. Arsenal away at Everton on Monday the 6th of December 2021. A trip to Goodison Park, a first trip for me, not a first trip for you, so we'll get to compare experiences again as we did with Salford. And as we always do in those episodes, for those of you that haven't been along, we talk about four key areas. They are the atmosphere, the location, the value and the character. And of course, this one's an older ground. So let me give you some stats first and then we'll get cracking with those four. So Goodison Park, first and foremost, one of the older grounds that we've been to, probably one of the oldest, opened in 1892, a uh, construction cost, interestingly, of £3,000 back at the time, just to tell you the difference in inflation over the years. It has got a capacity, Goodison Park, of 39,414, obviously that's since it became an all-seater, but its record attendance, as you would expect, was for a Merseyside derby, post-Second World War, 1948. And it was 78,299. So no surprise the game it was, but we're going to talk about the four areas in a moment. I guess this was quite a unique experience for me, though, because I was in the away end at your team. I was a neutral in the game. Not that you would believe it. You're going to, I'm sure, give a different argument later on. But it was all going quite swimmingly for Arsenal for a long time. And then there was late devastation and we saw the history making moment of possibly Rafa Benitez's last win in English football. So, Tom, talk to me initially about the day and what was your previous game as well, before I forget to ask? Yeah, so I'm, go I'm going to find it hard to judge Goodison Park <laughs> fairly, as it, for me it um, triggers bad memories. Both games I've been to, Arsenal have lost. Excellent. Yeah, I believe the first time I went was under with the Unai Emery reign, I think 2019, and then obviously in December. 1-0 up, Erdegaard, and then a string of, well, how, a string of us maybe overdoing it, but Richarlison had, was it at least two goals ruled out after VAR? I think he had two goals ruled out for VAR, and then I think there was a, a possible red card check for Ben Godfrey, if I remember, for uh, on Tommy Asu's face. I mean, look, I didn't realise at the time, but not getting into that, should have been red card, but <laughs> we're, not talking, we're not talking Arsenal decisions today. Yeah, so it stings, <laughs> Goodison Park's not a happy hunting ground in my experience as an Arsenal away fan. I guess I'll talk with you in a moment about the experience on that day, the atmosphere on that day and all of the, the build up to it. It was a Monday night, obviously, so it was an evening kickoff, a bit different. But for you, the first time you went, what were your initial impressions of Goodison Park? Yeah, so that was an afternoon kickoff and then obviously the Monday night. So I've seen it under the lights and also in the afternoon. Like, like you said, it's historic. Proper wooden, wood, literally wooden benches you sat on. Not the best view in places. I doubt there aren't many, well, we know for a fact there aren't that many grounds left like that across the country, certainly not in the Premier League. I think generally I, I do like Goodison Park, but I'm scarred by it at the same time. <laughs> Fair enough. I guess the other weird thing going forward to the game that we went to on the Monday night was the whole build-up during the day as we were obviously together for the whole weekend, having on three games in three days, was about this mass protest at Everton that was due to happen on that day against the ownership and against Rafa Benitez. They were all going to walk out in the 27th minute, signifying 27 years without a trophy. In the end, about 10 people left their seats, probably, uh, <laughs> despite them saying it was going to be about 60% on the news. But it was a, a bit of a weird game, wasn't it? Because... The Everton crowd, and I know they've been accused of turning quite quickly in the past, but the Everton crowd was almost anti-Everton and anti-Benitez, certainly, at the start of the game, which I don't think I have remembered seeing too often when going to watch a ground as an away fan. No, on the train, we travelled from Manchester to Liverpool before it and somewhere in between. A couple of Everton fans joined us and we, we got talking to them. And you could sense... They absolutely despised Rafa Benitez. Yeah. I think, and it wasn't, every fan base has a few radical out there fans that 
tweet ab- abuse and get want to get the manager sacked. Yeah, these ones. After a bit of bad form, but that that wasn't the case with Everton. You got the sense that the vast majority of the Everton support, even sensible thinking ones, wanted passionately wanted him to get the sack. It's quite a toxic environment, to say the least. And we were really thinking, what are we getting ourselves in for? What are we going to see? Are we going to see a mass exodus on the 27th minute as planned? But as you say, a few left, but nothing major. Yeah, and I think it was helped by the fact that probably if we get on to the game now, we'll move on to the first area of atmosphere. It was a fairly even first half. There weren't many flashpoints. I think if I remember rightly, the goal might have been the first shot on target in the game in first half stoppage time from Erdegaard. And... And obviously Arsenal were in the stage at the time, and I'm going to say this from a neutral point of view, where at 1-0 up they maybe went a bit more cautious than you would expect to see from a a top six side against a relegation threatened team. So tell me about the atmosphere, because there wasn't an awful lot for the fans to get behind. I want to first get your atmosphere of Goodison as a whole, and then we'll talk about the away end, where I can probably give a more balanced opinion. Because of the backstory... And the Everton fans weren't feeling very supportive. They didn't have a lot to shout about. They hated the man in charge. There were moments where they got a bit excited, mm-hmm. and especially obviously when they got their goals, it got up, and you can you can see how it there would be a it would get rocking in brief moments. But generally, I thought the atmosphere was flat. I wouldn't, I, although online before it it felt a bit borderline toxic. I didn't really get that impression in the ground. No, I don't think. Maybe if Arsenal had held their lead for a bit longer or had really, as they, I think they should have done, gone for the kill and maybe went 2 3 and up, I think it, I'd like to think this Arsenal team in March, as we're recording this, would do that now. Then maybe they'd have turned. But as they were always in the game, it was quite even, as you say. I suppose it wasn't either way. It was quite a flat atmosphere, but not aggressive in support or against their team, I thought. What do you think? Yeah, I think that's a, a fairly neutral view of the, the Everton end. I would almost say, to be honest, at the start of the game, it I guess the best word at the time for the Everton fans was apathy towards the team and towards the management. And obviously it was a summer where they couldn't invest because of financial fair play and all of these sorts of things. So there were mitigating circumstances for it. But given what we'd heard during the day, it was far more positive than we expected it to be. But I've got mm. to talk about the away end very quickly because I... Intrigued to hear this. I actually have positives and negatives. So in terms of the positives, it was a lot more vocal and a lot more positive than I expected it to be because at the time, again, there was a lot of chat about Arteta and obviously there was the massive overreaction after the game followed by a brilliant run of performances. But the the atmosphere in the away end as an away fan was fantastic. And to me, it felt like, I was going to another Luton game, which is also normally fantastic as well. And I felt like it, the similar sort of environment, which is all you can ask for as an away fan. The only negative I have, and I've pointed it out a number of times, and I appreciate it's ironic because I have had to be that person at the end of games before, is throughout the whole game, and it's something in Premier League football I can't work out, whether it's the tourism element, the casual fan element or whatever, but the amount of fans during the game that would turn their back to the game and start filming the crowd singing, Like, I couldn't quite grasp that. And that's the thing that I've found in recent Premier League games I've been to. Not that many. So it's not just an Arsenal problem. That's a Premier League thing, I'd say. But in terms of the atmosphere, the noise, the the support for the team, even at the end after they'd lost it in the last minute, I thought was pretty good and surprisingly good, I guess. Nice to hear being complimentary about Arsenal for a change. (laughs) And I I agree with all of that, really. I thought the atmosphere... Arsenal fans for home games have a reputation for being poor supporters that aren't very vocal. The away fans are generally good, and I've been been lucky to go to quite a few games this season away. Even had quite old chants that I think date back to like the 60s, 70s that were were being sung again. And we, I made the point of not rushing out of the ground. If you remember, I wanted this because at Goodison Park, both teams have to go right past the away fans down the tunnel, and Arteta was feet away for I thought is he going to cop some abuse here because we were on a bad run then and it was looking like we're going nowhere fast and tell me if I'm wrong the majority were clapping him off weren't they yeah they were sticking they were sticking with him and hopefully for good reason we're seeing the 
good signs now. But yeah, I was quite, I thought, oh, I'm, I'm going to say that, but I thought the Arsenal support were quite good, considering we'd just come off another bad result, because we'd lost to United only a couple of days before that. Yeah, it was the Thursday also. Yeah. Yeah. With that, though, we've got to find an atmosphere ranking overall. Now, you're in a noisy away end. It's very enclosed at Goodison Park, so it sounds louder than it probably is even, because you've got a roof right above your head for the bottom tier. What do you give mm-hmm. it? I find it quite difficult to score. It's a funny one, because we were expecting it to be all booze and maybe throwing things or <laughs> trying to leave it out. <laughs> how trying to like yeah wrap having to leave and like with security yeah i think flat actually is quite decent mm. compared to what it could have been so i'm, I'm willing to give, be quite generous in my marking because they didn't turn on their team which everton online are almost a bit of a meme for doing that they True. You hear about like the goodison boo and the fans are looking forward to hearing that and we didn't hear that so no. And when you're in the away end, which oh, am I going? I'm going to go with this fix. I think for atmosphere. No, that's fair enough, and that's the number I had in my head, so I will stick with it, even though it's uh, boring to be the same as you. But I, I think that's fair enough. But the attendance was still almost capacity thirty-eight thousand nine hundred and six, which, given what we'd heard all day beforehand, I thought the support was pretty good. And look, we got a brief a brief roar at the end when that Damari Gray stunner went in in the 92nd minute. And I know you won't want to relive that moment, but that was a good atmosphere for a couple of minutes after that. So we didn't get it all game, but we got a taster of it. So I think we have to go in the middle of the road. The, the other side is location. Now, you know me, I don't like a walk. It was another wet and windy day, but after Blackpool, it was basically a summer's day to us. So... Where do you go on location? Obviously, Liverpool's a city that's well connected. It's a couple of miles away from the main station. It was a little bit of a walk, but it's quite a nice walk. There's parks, there's plenty of food outlets along the way. There's pubs, one of which we went in. So, again, I'm I'm thinking middle of the road. But where are you? Yeah, I'm just trying to think what our journey was. Do we do we get the bus? We did get a bus, yes, from Lime Street, and that was convenient. So you come out of Lime Street, the main station. Catch a bus towards Anfield. Though Liverpool to... was heavily being done up, so bus stations were quite hard to make out at that point. But that's a temporary problem. <laughs> temporary and they still near the train station. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I still, I still don't think we found it too difficult working out where we needed to go. No. So that, that's convenient. I say getting there as well, right? I found this, I've been to both grounds now, twice, Anfield and Goodison Park. Getting back afterwards, because you, everyone's leaving at the same time. Mm that's when it gets a bit tricky. Maybe I've just not cracked it, what the most convenient way is, and someone in the comments might say, you, well, that's your fault for being stupid. There is an easy way to get back to the city centre. I don't know, you're a bit spoiled, aren't you, sometimes? A few-minute walk from the train station or an underground or tram stop. It doesn't, unfortunately, doesn't have that. Ugh, gonna go, I think I'm going to go with six again. I'm going to be a little less harsh than you, and I've got one point on the transport, as a public transport regular, as we both are, which is... It's the only ground I've been to other than Stoke where after the game, the club, the council, however it's done, have got fleets of buses lined up to take fans away. Now, the problem we encountered is that, one, there was a huge rush for trains and things out of the city centre because it was obviously a 10 o'clock finish and it went down to the wire as well. And the second thing was because of the way they'd set up those buses that they had there, instead of them being directed to certain places, each of them, it was half of them were on to try and save for the later fans and half of them were off or whatever or vice versa. So it was quite hard to actually get on one of the buses and get into the centre. But the idea is there and was great. So not done as effectively at Stoke, but a very good idea. And I would always advocate that at every ground. So I think that's a great thing. But because, as you say, it's not in the city centre, it was a wet and windy evening. I mean, I was on a euphoric high at that point and you wouldn't talk to me. So <laughs> it's very hard for you to remember or judge it. But I'm going to go one higher and give it a seven because that principle of having buses to fleet fans away after, to save the walks, to disperse them to wherever they need to go, it avoids trouble. It's a clever idea. And it is good for grounds that aren't right in the city centre. So for me, it gets one extra just for that. And when we get to Stoke, that will get a big one too. Right. Just want to say, how can you call yourself an neutral at the game when you come out of it feeling euphoric high quote? I'm gonna oh. quant- I'm gonna quantify this, right? Every one of us has been to a game with a friend at some point who you're going along, they're supporting their team, and you couldn't care less what happens in the game. 
there is nothing better as a mate for the old, you know, the old bants and all that. If they're, they let in a 93rd minute stunner to lose the game that they should never have lost in a million years. We've all been there and it makes us smile. Well, you've not, because I guess when you're coming with me for Luton, it's your second team in your hometown. So it makes sense. So I need, I think what we're saying is I need to get to a Glasgow Rangers game with our friend Greeny. Yes. See Rangers losing the last minute. And you will, you will have a lovely time. Let me promise you that. (laughs) Sounds good. That sounds good. But let's move on to value. Now, I've got to mention here because we don't often do Premier League rounds away from home because of obviously the the situation you being an Arsenal fan, me not supporting Arsenal, it's quite difficult to get tickets to go together. But the Premier League has a cap on away tickets for 30 quid. Now, Arsenal do an additional subsidising for that of £4. You didn't get it because you had to buy it secondhand, but that's besides the point. We've been to championship games, the likes of QPR springs to mind. I mean, Luton's Category A games and various others have been in and around and in some cases just over the £30 mark. So um, when we bought tickets for Leeds away in a championship before the pandemic curtailed that, that was £39 before the restrictions are in. So it's a brilliant incentive from the Premier League. It obviously helps when you're travelling on various days of the week because games get moved here, there and everywhere for TV. So the train prices often make up for it. But that on a ticket makes a huge difference, doesn't it? Oh, without doubt. And I think you make a good point that other leagues are affected too, but Premier League fat fans are affected by last minute changes to fit TV companies that are inconvenient, often mean you, don't, you couldn't, get, couldn't get the last train back to London, say, after a game finishes at 10 o'clock at night, which we know fans aren't, match going fans are not always thought of first and foremost. So it is good that there is this in the Premier League. And that does mean that even though Arsenal had played away in Manchester, I believe the first day before it, still on Monday night, you've got 3,000 Arsenal fans who are presumably from the London area. First and foremost, I'm based up north. It's easier for me. But yeah, you want to see packed out away ends. And it's a fantastic initiative. And it is quite ludicrous that it does mean that you could go as a Liverpool fan away to United and get a cheaper ticket than, like you say, Luton going to Leeds if they were still in the Championship together, which is pretty mind-boggling when you think about it, isn't it? It is. And obviously, I don't want to tempt fate. And again, I'm neutral to who goes down. But I'd be very interested if Everton do get relegated, which there is a real risk of, of what it might cost to be a Luton fan in the away end next year. So we might have to come back to that one in a year's time. But for the £26 it would be for an Arsenal fan, but a 30 quid generally, what was your uh, what's your take on value? I don't I don't think for Premier League football you can complain that much, can you? No, I've just got the that old saying twenties plenty ring in my head. Like, could it even be a bit cheaper? Because they say TV money and the sponsorship, these clubs don't really even need that. This is true. Like fans through the turnstile money. So could you make it even that a little bit cheaper? But that's that's pushing it. I think face value twenty six pounds. Compared well, to well, the rest well, of the period, well it's yeah. subsidising a bit more because they don't have to do that. So that's another that's another good thing. <laughs> Got to be nine out of ten, hasn't it? Minimum. Uh, I'm giving it. I'm going to give it a nine. Yeah, I, I mean, based on the twenty six pound, I would give it nine out of ten. But the fact of the matter is, because one of your fellow fans created a situation in which we had to pay thirty, I'm only giving it eight out of ten. But that's uh, that's because. And let's be fair, the only way that someone like me is going to get to an Arsenal away game in the Premier League is via that second-hand market for a fan. Well, even even me, I've only got one away credit on my membership. And if any Arsenal fans watching this, they know then I've not got a chance in hell of getting a ticket in my own right. I have to depend on spares online, which opens it up to, unfortunately, people are making a a little bit extra on the side, which isn't ideal, but that's another issue to solve another day, isn't it? Yes, fans don't fleece other fans. But let's move to the final one, which is probably where Goodison will make up a large amount of its uh, any negatives it may have, which is character. Because whether you love the stadium or not, I expected to be wowed by it, like I did at, say, a Villa Park. And I I didn't get that feeling for whatever reason. Um, I think it's just because I'm an old man and the lack of comfort in those old wooden seats was not doing it for me. And the fact that I had a pillar right next to me and couldn't actually see about a third of the game. But, you know, I was literally the last seat before a pillar. Um, But 
look, it's got character. It's one of the few old fashioned grounds still left in the Premier League. It's very steep was my first impression of it in terms of like when you look at the stands behind the goal compared to yeah. ones I've been to elsewhere. And the moments where it did have atmosphere, it was incredible. So, and it's even got the old fashioned, like the turnstiles are literally straight off the street. You're walking down normal streets and going into the game, which you don't get as much as you used to, for sure, even from when we were growing up. So what's your character score and why? I didn't love it, but there's so many features, which means I can't rank it now. Yeah, I was going to say, I think we're going to be ending up looking quite hypocritical if we lay into it when we say how much we don't love the solar spells. Yeah. Yeah, you get padded seats at solar spells, you get a perfect view, no beams or pillars in your way. But we criticise them for being soulless and lacking character, being boring. I don't think any of those words apply to Goodison Park. No. Uh, yeah, like you say, you come off terrace streets straight into the ground as it was, as we know, you just said when it was first built over 100 years ago. And that, that is special. I agree. Wooden benches been a bit pampered in my time as a football fan the Emirates is quite a comfy place to go not really used to being on those I mean it was less comfortable than Kenilworth Road and I think that takes some doing yeah it's <laughs> quite impressive It'd be interesting to know if the home seats are a bit bit better maybe they'd like to make the away away fans uncomfortable but <laughs> I think it has it oozes with character it, yep. like you say some steep some steep stands I will be giving it an eight of character I liked it I think I like it more than you you did like it more than me, but I've generally, I've gone back over a few of these recently while updating the thumbnails and all that boring stuff. And generally I've given all of these old fashioned grounds an eight at least. And then the ones that I've loved or got a special feeling from, I've gone for nine, which I can't do here. The only other thing I want to point out from it, which was a frustration for me, because ultimately we're going to watch a game of football is as much as it's lovely to have bundles of character on the way in, it's lovely to see things around the ground. The way the stands were designed, so because the top tier or the second tier from the stand where the away fans are comes so far over the top. I mean, we were only about two thirds up in the, the bottom tier. And mm -hmm. as soon as the ball was probably above 15, 20 feet in the air, you can't see it. You can't see it. So probably a third of the game, like every time a goal kick's taken, you're not seeing the ball when it's in the air. So you have to factor that in because if you're there for a game of football and you can't see the football a third of the time, there is a problem. But it oozed character. It was old fashioned. There were so many things I liked about it. I just didn't fall in love. I think that's the, the best way to put it. But I, like you, will give it an eight, which I think despite having different scores in the middle, gives us the same score overall. But Final thoughts on Goodison? Good old ground. Obviously glad I've ticked it off my list. Been twice now. Seen two defeats. As I say, I know that, like we said, the bus is laid on, but still taking a while to get back to the city afterwards, a long train afterwards. I won't be in a rush to get back to Goodison Park, I don't think. What about you? Well, I, if Luton are playing their next season, I will be going probably. I won't lie to you there, but... While it may be the end of Goodison Park and its journey for both of us, depending on the situation, it probably isn't the end of Everton Football Club because obviously they have had planning permission for a new ground and it looks like whether a potential relegation, the political situations and whatever affect it, it looks like as it stands, Everton will be on the move in two to three years' time. So it might be a, a return to review the 92 for Everton in a couple of years on this channel, if we're still going, of course. But... That was it for Goodison Park. Uh, a lovely memory for Tom as an Arsenal fan yet again. But if you did enjoy it, please do put a thumbs up on it. Let us know what you thought if you were there. Let us know if you're a regular in the home end, what it's like. Have you got proper seats? Let me know that at least. If you want to stay up to date with the rest of this series, please do subscribe down below and turn that notification bell on. Thank you very much to Tom for joining me as always. Cheers, everyone. And we shall see you next time. <laughs>